All right. Finally. All right, F5 now. Not that you can hear me yet if you don't have the stream loaded. How do I sound now, guys? Good? It is. Electronic high fives for everyone. I know people are still going to be loading in, but uh, let's see. Should I start? I guess I'll just start. Well, uh, all right. So um, if you guys have been following along with me the past, uh, I don't know, like month, I guess, um, we've been working away on this olive girl, and um, I finally finished sculpting all of her wood bits on um, my personal stream uh, at Poly Sculpture. Um, I guess, uh, was it last week? I guess this week actually, on Monday. Yeah, Monday I finished. So Monday I finished uh, all of her wood detailing and um, kicked her off to print and uh, Tuesday morning she was done printing and um, yeah so those images are all up on the internet uh, now but and I'll link you guys now in the uh, chat to my uh, art station where I just posted her uh, her photo shoot Sony what's up man so here so you guys probably some might have already seen it, but anyway, there's the album of the of all the photos from the 3D print, so you can see them uh, at like highest quality or whatever instead of me streaming the pictures to you. Um, let's see. I guess I will share on the stream as well, just so. Uh, just so I have it on the video, because people watching this video after the fact won't be able to see it. So, uh, I know I put them put them out there somewhere. So, yay! All right. Uh, okay, so I printed out two, um, and I'll switch over to my little camera here in a second just to kind of show you. Uh, I printed out one that is uh, about five inches, and um, and uh, I printed out a second one on Wednesday uh, that's pushing like six or so. I don't have a actually I do have a ruler. Let me grab it. Yeah, so one of them is about uh, five and a half, and the other one is about seven inches. Okay, yeah, so we got one five and a half and one seven. And, uh, so maybe, I'm gonna go full, full camera mode here for a minute so you guys can see the two prints just because Pictures are cool, but I feel like sometimes uh, cameras are better and that you can kind of see scale, so. All right, so, uh, yeah, here we go. So this is the, this is the raw print uh, resin. So this is printed with the white um, Formlabs resin. So you can't really see a lot of the details only because it's very, it's it, even though it's a matte white resin, it's still very uh, translucent. 
So, um, but the details are all there. And so this is the larger one. This is like seven inches or so, like in my hand. And then, um, and she does stand up, which is great because, um, you know, it was kind of like a YOLO move there. I didn't know if it was going to stand or not. So this is the, the gray. And um, let me see if I can get my camera to focus up on that instead of me. Yeah, not really. Anyways, so that's the, the, the smaller one, smaller of the two. And so, uh, you know, you guys might notice I actually did a, um, so I went outside and picked an actual olive leaf and um, I was able to stuff it in that little hole and I just flung it off. But anyway, so the olive li leaf uh, fits into the, the keyed hole that I made for her. Um, I need to glue it in place permanently, but anyways. So it does fit, and in the larger version, um, in the larger version, I actually made that hole much deeper so I can actually get like a little branch in there. So these are the two prints side by side, all cool and stuff, yay. Yeah, I know. You know what really sucks too, is that this branch here actually had a baby olive on it, like a little one, like this big. And when I was like trying to set up my photo area um she fell forward when i knocked the uh the the stand i was using and the olive itself broke off so that was um that was really sad that was a sad day so there was an olive on that little branch which would have been epic yeah exactly the even the 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 gray um, pri uh, the the gray resin V3 it's really nice but it's still translucent and it just doesn't um, capture all of the details as much as uh, as much as it does uh, by painting it so uh, again so if you guys are just joining in we're just talking about um, the finishing of all of our project that took way too long um, and I'm just gonna spam it in the chat one more time for you guys in case you guys want to click on the, lo the large image so anyways that was Olive she was cool uh, fun project um, learned a lot actually even for me it was just uh, a lot of experiments on the wood and kind of how to sculpt the integration between the skin and the wood was always a challenge. So, um, so yeah, pretty happy with her. Um, pretty happy with it. So yeah, if you guys have any 3d printing questions on, on this, uh, let's see here. Uh, she took, um, 17 hours to print at the smaller size um and uh she was hollow as well yeah what am i gonna work on now that's the real question right i know yeah actually i feel that way too because i'm always like all right throw that other stuff away let's move on to something new and different I pretty much dislike everything I make as soon as I finish making it. So I'm always like, oh, no, don't look at that. Let's go on and move on to something more fun and cool. Wow, you emoted an applaud with a red text there. That's cool. So, um, yeah, what am I going to work on next? So it took me a long time to kind of uh, think about what my next project should be. Um, and I talked to the wife last night and we brainstormed some ideas. So, um, we kind of came on this one idea that we're going to do a, um, uh, a spider, half spider, half woman. So we're going to do a spider woman, but not like Spider-Man where he's like all athletic, but it's more like. Yeah, like if you were to ma uh, imagine um, like the lower body as a spider, top upper body as a woman. And um, that's what we're going to be working on today. So 
Uh, there's no um, clear concept that I have for this piece. Um, and we're just going to kind of go and use various references to try to get like the spider legs uh, made and um, and the you know the, the body and and kind of go with it so um, for this piece we're going to be also working on um, working between the two streams uh, cue lag from Dark Souls let me google that um, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm probably going to go a little bit more. A little bit more realistic, I guess, with the spider design. Um, so it won't have like its own head. Um, but uh, yeah, this is cool. Yeah, I mean, kind of similar idea. Yeah, for sure. It's definitely not like. Well, I don't know that anything's super original anymore, but basically it'll be my own version of something like this. So it'll be, it'll be interesting because um, uh, it'll be a lot of like spider, spider uh, research. So if you guys are arachnophobic, um, I apologize. And uh, yeah, so let's go ahead. So today we're just going to start blocking out stuff. So let me uh, throw this in the trash and we'll keep going. Trash that. Not really. I'm not going to trash it. I just mean close it. Put it in the recycle bin. And um, I think uh, for this project... I'm kind of making a decision now. I mean, I don't know if I'll stick to it. I hope I will, but um, I want to, um, it's going to be a four 3d print. So we're talking like at least 15 pieces probably for the print, maybe more. I mean, we already got eight legs and if they're going to be posable legs, um, uh, you know, it's going to be exponentially more than that. Uh, the body itself is going to be at least three or four pieces by judging. So it's going to be, um, Oh, I know. I haven't really started yet. Don't worry. My, the view of the, the beautiful, um, of our beautiful, uh, star. Ah, no, here we go. All right. Let me get rid of olive. There you go. Bye olive. Um, So, yeah. So that olive project was fun and draining at the same time because uh, it's one of those things that you end up sculpting the same material quite a bit. So it can be quite uh, tedious. All right. So let's go to town. So we're going to spend most of today uh, blocking out our, our shapes. So a lot of Dynamesh, a lot of really rough, um, rough shapes. So hopefully you guys have a lot of um, questions and talking to do. Because uh, You guys are here for my entertainment as much as I'm here for yours, right?
Yeah, I know. I don't worry. That's how I feel like every time I stream. So, crickets. Well, it's been a pretty cool week. Um, I finally got a new schedule for my own stream. I got streaming every Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, over at Polysculpture. So we'll be definitely jumping between this one and that one on the same project. Um, and uh... Ah. Well, you're late, man, so you don't get to know yet. Backstory. Ah, oh, okay. Well, let's uh, let's figure that out together. Well, I was thinking Black Widow, um, but I don't know the shape. The you know the the body of the Black Widow spider is kind of round and bulbous. Um, so. I haven't really 100% decided yet. So we're just going to kind of uh, work on the abdomen and then go to like the thorax area. I'm pulling up some additional references for me to look at. So I'm going to spare you guys just so you know. Like I have Google images of like a bunch of really gross spiders up on my screen right now. And so I'm not going to throw those in your screen. So if you guys want to join me in spider research, have at it. Um, well, the spider is going to be a half spider, half woman, right? And we're talking like from the maybe the belly button up. So... I don't know that a spider would mutate into a human or vice versa in that regard. See, like, the mutation thing doesn't make as much sense to me as maybe, like, you're born half spider, half human. So, like... Well, maybe uh, if this is my own stream, I go into some other extravagant ideas. Yeah, for sure. I mean, like, when I... Well, actually, I have a kind of a different idea for the legs themselves. Um, uh, hey, Artie Ben. How's it going? You know, I used to have a pet tarantula. It was amazing. Tarantulas have pretty cool body shapes too. Good man, we're uh, we're starting off to build a spider. At least, at least, um, like block in. Yep, spider humanoid exactly. So we're just gonna kind of. So as I work some, I'm actually like also grabbing references as I work. So if you guys see me stop sculpting for a minute, um, 
Uh, I'm grabbing more images here. Man, that Black Widow movie completely ruined my Google image search, by the way. Like, now I can't search Black Widow and actually get a picture of a Black Widow. I have to get Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow. This world is ridiculous. Uh, the gizmo. Okay, yeah, so, um, I think the things to remember is the alt key is, like, your best friend. So, if, like, you hit alt, you can, like, rotate the gizmo to, like, be anywhere you want. And then these three buttons in the middle are, like, your gizmo, like, go-tos. So, you can go, like, uh, what is this one? Uh, mesh center. Uh, then you got your home, which is like, I think zero, zero, zero floor. And then, um, then you got this, uh, reset. So that resets the axes. Um, if you hold shift, you get locked at five degrees. So that's pretty handy. Um, and you notice that I have like mirror X uh, turned on. So if I hit this uh, little pin button, it will go to the center of not the object, but like the center of the two, two halves that are being mirrored, which is good sometimes and kind of weird the other time. So just keep that in mind. If you hit X um, and you're mirroring, it's like not going to put the gizmo in the center. It's the center of the two centers of the two halves. So, um, yeah, so if you hit alt and just click on the, the face, it will go to the normal, you see? So alt, it's still alt, like your best friend. Um, yeah, now I will say I find it not to be super accurate, like, I don't know, like sometimes it feels, I feel like it doesn't pick up the right normal and sometimes it does. I, and I haven't really gotten used to it. Like maybe it's better with smoother surfaces, but anyway, it's pretty close. Maybe it really depends on where you click. Like if you click on the face versus the vertex. So I haven't really gotten that uh, far with a tool like to get it to be, um, like perfect for me, but it's definitely, um, it's definitely pretty good. Um, yeah, yeah, like as long as you have your sub tool visible. Um, like move that out. So you can, that's, a, that's actually the best thing is like I can click over there. Um, So the only downside is it doesn't work with alt. So alt is also the key to switch subtools. So it's kind of broken in that you can't alt and then click on a different subtool and switch your gizmo. So you actually have to hit this unlock button and then you can click to be whatever subtool pivot you want to use. Um, and then click the lock button again to like actually control it. So yeah, it's only a downside. So if you have multiple subtools, the alt thing doesn't really work. Um, too much. Uh, how much material was used to print Olive? Uh, she used, let me bring up the form file real fast. Uh, She was printed at 50 micron, so not even 25. Um, so she could have been printed higher resolution, but uh, print time would have went from like 20, 20 hours to like 40 or 35 or something ridiculous. And I'm a patient person, but I guess I'm not that patient. So um,
Yeah, form two, exactly. So I know that it was around 100 milliliters, somewhere around there. Um, so the larger one used, uh, it's still loading. I'll get back to you on that. It's a big file. There's like three million polys that we brought in to the the printer. So, um, uh, I have no immediate plans of going to the summit this year. I don't think I can make it. Unfortunately, I don't live in LA anymore, so I don't um, I don't get access, easy access to all the cool um, to all the cool stuff that happens all the time. Um, it's easy. So I used to be able to just go to E3 and SeaGraph and Comic Con and Designer Con and all these other cool cons and uh, Zebra Summits, um, you know, every year, no problem, because uh, I was like right down the street from everything. So, uh, but I live in Northern California, so. <laughs> Let's see, all right, so I'm gonna share the, uh, I'm gonna jump back over to Olive real quick and show you guys the, um, Trying to capture just the window. There he goes. All right. So this was the all of uh, print setup. You can see all of our supports. Let me make it bigger for you guys. So these are the supports uh, for her. Um, so it looks like a mess really, but, uh, the cool thing about the supports here is that they just, they, um, they pop right off. So, um, I can use, a um, just my hands really to pull it all off. So, yeah. Uh, so this one here, the largest one, so you can see that from the front view, this is exactly how much uh, I can print is this gray line right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. There you go, this gray line right there. That's the max build volume, and that's how big I printed. So I could have pushed it another couple centimeters maybe. Um, I don't know, the the, the uh, preform software is kind of bugging out on the colors. I don't know why. Uh, this print took about 20 hours or so, maybe like 22, I think. Um, and this is 335 millimeters, milliliters. But I don't actually think that's accurate. That doesn't sound right to me. But, because um, she is hollow, so. And it's not reading it as hollow, yeah. So there's there's something weird happening with the um the uh the file, so it's reading wrong. I think it's about half that to be honest, milliliter wise. I think it's like one seventy. Yeah, for sure. 
I'm going to reopen this file and see what the numbers say. So the, um, the, so Dougie asked if I'm going to go to Summit and he brings me beer, uh, will I go? Um, that is very tempting. That is very tempting. Like I said, I have no immediate plans on uh, going, but um, I definitely wouldn't, I would love to go and, and stop by, so. Just don't wanna make any any promises yet. Um, all right. So we're going to keep all these things as uh, separate subtools. Um, this way uh, we can control our Dynameshes uh, a little bit more. Come on. There it goes. So we're just going to kind of start off with like the base of two like two sections of the spider and um, then we'll like kind of uh, style it from there I guess um, Yeah, I don't know. My software, preform software, is kind of wigging out. So um, it's uh, it's it's showing it like transparent, like single sided for some reason. You can see supports like in our mouth, but the thing is, we should be able to see. The cross section of our of our her model. So I never really had this issue before. So this is kind of a first for me. But anyways, yep. She took a while to print. Um, let's save. Probably gonna print out one more of her so I can send her to uh, Formlabs. So I gotta kick that off maybe later this week. I did on uh, I did the hollowing on my personal stream, um, the poly sculpture stream. So we um, it was like Monday I believe we we um, finished sculpting all the wood, um, and uh, finished sculpting all the wood, and then um, then we did all the prep. So we like put put a bunch of holes in it. Um, we did the hollowing with a mesh mixer. It's a free uh, 3D printing uh, uh, like app that kind of like helps you do things like check your file for printability, um, adding like specific uh, holes in it.
<laughs> yeah, it it goes quite fast. Um, I pretty much do it on any model that I plan on uh, printing to be uh, like large. So, um, Stuff eight legs in here somehow. Yeah, the hollowing goes qu quite fast. Um, it's not a, uh, it's not a crazy process really. Just kind of have to know, um, how much you want to hollow. So we did, um, for her, we did a four, four millimeter at this scale, at the smaller size, we did four millimeters, uh, wall, wall thickness which is actually quite uh, quite thick, actually, um, compared to like what, like realistically you can get away with like two. Um, but I don't like to hollow that much where I can't really, um, I like the weight, I guess. So. Yeah. Dude, I know, like, price, uh, pricing for, like, prints through uh, printing services is, like, really expensive, man. And so, like, you know, like you said, you, you upload a model a thousand bucks, right? Like, this olive print cost me, like, 20 bucks in material. Like, yeah, granted, the printer's, like, $3,500, but that's, like, a one-time fee, you know? Then you're rock and roll and, and print as much as you want. So, um, so I think we, uh, and I've been using it nonstop for like, um, well, more than a year now, year and a half, I guess at this point. So, um, several hundreds of prints. So, and, uh, you know, I printed big stuff. I actually found... I finally got done unpacking. Let me show you this big print I did. Yeah, so this is another print I did. So this is something like, he's 12 inches from tail uh, tail to head, and I think he's a uh, what is he six six and a half inches tall. So this guy, he's like a kaiju I sculpted a while ago on stream, um, and so he's like heck a big right. Um, and you can still see he has like pieces that I haven't um, cleaned up in the arms here, like seams. So I got to clean all that up. I've just been really lazy. But anyway, so this character here was probably like, I don't know. Uh, so his his main body's hollow and his head area is hollow. 
think his tail is hollow too. Um, but this one here is probably like 300 milliliters. So this guy probably cost me like 40 bucks or something, 50 bucks to print. So yeah, he's cool. Rawr. No, sir, you didn't see me playing with your dolls again. Anyway, so this is like one of the things you can do. So that's the whole idea is like piecing out the, uh, the models so much that like you can just print out like as big as you want. Um, well, you don't have to use the Formlabs resin, um, but I like, I, I do honestly like it the most. Um, to work with so for me personally i i like working with the resin like as a material um i've used some third-party stuff and i didn't really care for it much um but you don't have to no uh but i will say like for your best for the best experience um it is worth using um and you know Yeah, I mean, a print like that would cost at least like 500 bucks um, from like most service providers, if not more. So, um, yeah, I don't know. So there's that. Yeah, I printed that thing like a year ago and I still haven't, um, I still haven't really uh, cleaned it up fully. I mean, I painted it, but kind of a, kind of pathetic, um, really. Sorry. <laughs> Big sneeze coming on, guys. Sorry. Ooh. Oh, man. I thought it was going to be a sneeze for sure. I know I'm going to sneeze in a second here. I can, like, feel it building up. So we're just kind of blocking in the uh, torso area right now. Um, working on um, integrating the two. Uh, I guess what would be the two pieces coming together. So I really want it just to be like her abdomen, like ends up turning into the spider. So. Um, Yeah. Well, I mean, if this is her booty back here, then I would say yes. Uh, well, uh, Freak, where do you live? That's probably a good start to, um, 
know if a lot of people will have Form 2s around where you're at. Um, Uh, Seattle. Um, I know a few people up that way that have Form 2s. I don't know that there's actually like a meetup, but... Um, but um, I would definitely encourage you to join if you really want to like see what they're like. Um, you can get sample parts from Form Labs. They'll mail you pieces. Um, and then if you check out like, uh, what's a good site? It's like, um, Sorry, I can't remember the site right now off of hand. I'm thinking about it. Um, it's like XYZ something. God damn it, I can't remember. Anyways, uh, yeah, there's a way to get like prints done on a Form 2 using like some public uh, services. So um, it's been way too long, guys. Sorry. Um, Oh yeah, it is called, okay, it's called Make XYZ. Um, and I know there's another, uh, another company very similar, but um, basically you can like upload a model and then say you want it printed on a Form 2 and then it'll be like Form 2s in your area. Um, and uh, that will be like your, your way to get like your stuff printed on a printer that you might be interested in before actually um, uh, before actually doing it. So Ooh, brush eyes got all crazy. Um, so that's one, that's one way, right? Is uh, that, um, Second is a um, uh, obviously uh, getting a sample piece from Form Labs, and third would be um, oh yeah, if you join like uh, so Mold Three D Printing Artist Group, Mold Three D Printing Artist Group on Facebook has like a lot of people with Form Twos, uh, myself included. Uh, you might luck out and get like people on there that would offer to like print out stuff for you as like a service. Um, yeah. So yeah, I was going to touch upon that real quick, but Doug pretty much summed it up pretty good. Like as a note, you can't compare like FDM printers to SLA printers. Like it just, there's so far, like so much of a different technology that even the same like micron settings on an FDM versus a, um, uh, SLA is like, um, uh, just like night and day kind of a situation. So, um, I would say like, I personally wouldn't get one of those as a substitute. Um, they're fun to like mess around with. I wouldn't spend more than like, um, a couple hundred bucks on them. Gonna relocate these legs a little bit. Give them some more space. 
Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're cool. I don't have any prints. I, I pretty much uh, recycled all of my old uh, FDM prints at this point. Um, just to make space for all the other cool shit that I got behind me. Um, so I really had to like cut down on like prints or even sculptures that I like. Unless I really like them. Um, I do have a printer bot, which is a great little printer. Um, and it's a... Uh, it is cool. It is cool. It's fun to mess with, but um, yeah, the, the technology really can't be compared. Um, if you want to do like a little bit more of a functional design stuff, then getting one of those printers is not a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, like, you can get some really nice, smooth surfaces with uh, FDM prints. Um, so if you have, like, something very, um, very much, like, about the silhouette and, um, like, smooth shapes or even just, like, big, big swooping shapes, um, like cloth or something, you can get some really nice stuff and you can paint it and make it look pretty good. Um, but as soon as you want to start getting like thread detail or like wood detail or like fine wrinkles and stuff, that's where like those printers really can't really come through um, as much. So. I really like this uh, capsule insert mesh. I wish that it was as a, uh, an option to use the capsule for um, the gear. Like I wish there was capsules in this gear, but because I really like that capsule thing. So if you guys are getting this problem, like you go and have symmetry turned on and then you go to like transpose, not transpose, but gizmo your model and try to scale it. Uh, and you notice it stretches out all kind of weird. Turn on your local symmetry and then that will make it so you can um, extend out the, um, the mesh here. I could build this with uh, Z spheres, but um, I'm gonna have to make them all separate pieces anyway, so I'm just gonna use insert meshes.
Yeah. Yeah, if you really want to do like big stuff, then FDM is really good because the price point is much better for like printing stuff. It's the, um, you know, and there's nothing wrong with like combining both materials, like using some stuff for resin, some stuff with uh, plastic or like PLA. Um, so like cosplay is like a great example, I guess. Um, yeah. I, you know, there's a lot to consider when buying a, a printer. Um, unfortunately, it's still very like hobby level for us at least. Um, I would not recommend getting a form two and like expect to make a living off of it. Um, but if you buy it just as a means of presenting your work, um, I don't think there's anything wrong with that because, um, I mean, that's basically what I do with mine. So, you know, you can spend a few thousand dollars on a copy of like pro key shot, you know, for just presenting your work. I mean, it's really just a tool. So, um, I personally like having physical things, uh, made, um, back gonna pull up an image of the leg joints uh, legs yeah I'm not gonna lie like printing with SLA is can be very finicky and I um, and can be a very expensive way to have failures so um, you know, there's a lot to consider when buying that kind of technology. It's not a printer that you can just kind of mess with usually because there's so much like precision involved. Um, so you can't really treat it like an FDM, but there are some DIY kits out there for SLA that are pretty cool. Um, but you know, that's not really for everyone. Some people just want to use the tool. Some people want to build it. So it's really like a personal uh, preference there. So Black Widow kind of has like these double like doodads coming out right away and then that goes into the big leg. So the longer we spend like blocking out these uh, initial forms, the better for like all the detail and stuff that we want to sculpt later will be set up for. So definitely want to try to get all these pieces right first um, so we don't have to go backwards later.
Thanks, man. She's um she's cool. I wouldn't say she's flawless, but I definitely um you know with with anything that you do, I think you always have to pick a point to which you're you're ready to stop. You feel like you've achieved uh, not perfection, but at least like a quality standard that you believe in. And, um, you know, you move on and try to like learn, learn from that. So these are the legs that kind of go straight up at this point, like that. So these are our up legs. That means these are our transition legs. Flip those around maybe. I'm just trying to like bring a little bit of shape to the legs first. Just to kinda help identify like top versus bottom. Get a little bit of a S curve in there or what have you. So we're just gonna basically block out all these legs and then um and then we'll uh we'll duplicate them and then we'll modify So now that I think about it a little bit more, if I wanted to save time, I'd probably model one of these legs down down Z, uh, like on zero, and then duplicate it and like move it into place. But, um, and it's actually not too late to do that. Um, but uh, I do like blocking it out in place, at least for now, so we can get a sense of scale. Um, Probably gonna scale these legs up a little bit bigger just so they're more creepy. Increase that creepy factor. Especially the front legs tend to be the big ones. Front legs, the middle ones are like smaller and straight down. And then the back ones are also pretty big. So once we get these guys kind of in place, um, So one thing to deal with a creature like this is that aside from the obvious that the um, the legs will be fragile, um, having multiple legs that are all like joint based like this um, um, they uh, they tend to not like stand on their own very well. Like I don't know if you guys ever played with like a toy that's like spider legs, like they just kind of flop around usually. And so it's really hard um, to like come up with like a really good keying system, a joint system that is like forgiving enough to like move 
the, the joints around, but also strong enough to hold her up in place. Um, yes, we are dynameshing right now. So each one of these pieces is a dynamesh. Um, and as I, as I dynamesh, or as I add on new pieces, um, we dynamesh again. So, so like we'll use the insert brush. We'll add these little cool capsules that are brand new and the uh, the four R eights. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll um, we'll split it out into a new piece. So. So like these are the same piece right now. We'll split uh, mass points, and then we'll like be left with our uh, our new piece as a new subtool. All Cool thing about this process too is that when you use insert mesh on a dyna mesh object and uh, you split that mesh off so it's like its own subtool now, it automatically has dyna mesh turned on from the pe previous piece. And so all you have to do is control drag and then you get your dyna mesh um, is still going. So you uh, don't have to like re go to the menu and hit dyna mesh again. You're already, you're already in that mode. Um, uh, which can be convenient to help you block out uh, shapes pretty fast. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to upscale this whole leg. Now, okay. Well, if I don't split it into a new subtool, these points between the two uh, leg joints are going to weld together with DynaMesh. Um, so we don't want that to happen. We want to keep each of the components of the leg um, separate. It allows me to control their densities better and uh, add their shape. So. That's pretty much the main benefit. Now, if this was like a human arm and I'm blocking in like bicep, forearm, hand, um, you would probably not split them out into different shapes and just dynamesh them and make them all one piece. So, but because this is a, an arachnid, uh, we want these pieces to emulate more like what they are in real life. If I were to dynamesh right now, you see how that merges the seam? It's all one piece. That's not what I want, so I want to keep this one uh, separate.
What are we doing, man? It's a surprise. It is a surprise. Good, because this is going to be some creepy she's knit stuff. See that pro censorship right there, guys? Pro. Spooters are awesome, man. Right. So the middle legs are like a good size, but these front legs are way too small. So let's go ahead and group those. Group those. Use a select lasso. Group those. I'm gonna turn on um, topological as soon as I get my start menu to go away. There you go. Uh, topological on the move tool, and now I can um, pull like just the meshes themselves around to elongate them without like deforming uh, the pieces next to them too much. So I don't want to re-polygroup this uh, yet. Spider Woman, creepy Spider Woman. Right, let's block in our face real fast.
if you guys like feel like why is he working on the right side of his screen so much I have like a little reference thing on my left side so um, yeah so that's that's why <laughs> She's not going to have any arms, actually. So, yeah, I kind of have an idea there. They're going to be kind of like, like they're ripped off and then they healed back into our skin. It's going to be really pretty. Pretty stuff. So she used to have arms, that's the idea. Yeah, she's gonna kinda have like, uh, kind of like, I don't know, something like this, with like a nose and a smile. Done, finished guys. That's the face. Right there. Scary, right? And we get the clap. That's awesome. Yeah, so pretty much she's gonna have uh, eight, eight eyes, I guess. Yeah, eight eyes. And then uh, some cool hair. <laughs> yeah, send a print, guys. We're done. Um, Yeah, exactly, right? So I've got to kind of work out like how much human uh, form she still has, like in her face, compared to like um, brought you back to ZBrush. What were you using before ZBrush?
Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, we'll get back into the story for sure. I just, uh, my brain doesn't really have the capacity to, uh, to think about what, what she's going to look like and what her background is at the same time. I, I do a lot of my thinking, um, uh, off stream, so. This mouth. Let's try that again. Her scale seems kind of off, so the dynamic resolution has to go quite high. That's better. Yeah, I think. Um, I think she should definitely have like a interesting story for sure. Um, Just gonna kind of smooth this out. Um, I know I'm not gonna be able to like finish detailing everything out 
today, so I don't want to like leave the mouth half done, so. I kind of want to get like her face shape like in the in the realm of like humanoid-ish and then we'll get there so she's not not retarded but not done either give her some nostrils real quick just kind of hinting at the general forms right now because I still got to kind of think about how her eyes are going to um, uh, how her eyes are going to um, like integrate into her um, her whole head so that's going to be kind of challenging in itself so I don't want to like commit too much to like any kind of human anatomy at this point other than like making it not look the areas that are in here not look bad so just kind of want to like add some basic basic nose stuff and then have the nose actually look not bad too So we got a nose, kind of. Uh, so that's her, what would it be like her skull, but she doesn't really have a skull anymore. So it's just gonna kind of have to become like, eye sockets or something up here so we'll see I think I need to go a little bit higher and maybe smaller on the top one I really should create like a little mask right now just so I could quickly place these Still not high enough. So we're just trying to like figure out eye placement right now, just a little bit. Let me just draw like. I know what I'm gonna do. Screw all that, that's taking too long. Let's just do insert meshes. So I'm gonna do insert, insert spheres, and that will give us like spots. And then if you guys change the depth of your brush to be uh, like lower, you can insert and it'll be like in sunken in.
on. There it goes. Yeah, I definitely not. I mean, I have like a loose idea of what I want, but uh, definitely, definitely gonna be doing some offline research here in this department. All right, so we got our spider girl kind of blocked out. Yeah, uh, well, you know, none of these are gonna be, um, too much of a copy in terms of the eye pattern, only because, uh, she has to read more human in the face and the eyes have to like look like a cross between human eyes and spider eyes so um yeah definitely something i'm going to play with so but um that's it guys i think i had to cut short our um stream a little early today so um Thank you guys so much uh, for uh, joining me again, as usual. Um, if you guys were not here in the beginning of the stream, um, I shared uh, the um, the high res Im uh, high res images of our um, olive sculpture that we did um, for the past few weeks. So. Um, if you guys wanted to check that out, I'm going to send you guys over the link now. And um, we're, we're also starting our new project, um, Spider Woman, Spidery Woman, um, who's also going to be uh, all done up for printing and uh, possibly a game real-time model too. So kind of debating that uh, right now. Um, so yeah, thank you guys for coming in and uh, hanging out and... Um, Hope you guys learned something, I guess. Um, and uh, next uh, Monday will be my next stream on uh, Poly Sculpture. So um, we'll start chugging through uh, more of the blocking phase and uh, kind of make some more real progress on this thing. So yeah, it's going to be fun. She's going to look cool, I think. Um, she doesn't look cool now, but she will look cool. Everything starts off looking like garbage, so that's how we roll. <laughs>